I wanted to give you guys the inside look to the workout video, uh, which is more of a stretching routine that I did when pregnant. Um, I am now 10 weeks post-pregnancy, and uh, I actually still do this every night just because I found it helps me relax. And um, I once did a yoga class that taught me kind of portion of this. I built onto it uh, that's specific to pregnancy. But uh, they said if you did this every night, you'd be like the healthiest you could possibly be. I'm not sure if that's entirely true, but I do feel a lot better when I do it. So don't laugh. Uh, this is why this is only for subscribers. But here we go. So the first thing I did uh, was I started with my wrists. I do a lot of computer work all day. So I just rotate them one way. This is gonna kind of be the shortened version uh, because you could do this as long or as short as you feel like your body needs. So once you kind of do your wrists a few times back and forth, we're gonna do our elbows, kind of like we're jumping rope. And then you would go to your arms. You can do swimming or both at one time and then go the opposite direction. If it feels like really unnatural, you can also do the elbow version, going back and forth like this. I really love this one. Um, there's a walk away the pounds video that they do like walking in this. So that's where I got this move from. So this really helps loosen up all that upper body. Uh, next, because I do a lot of computer work, uh, what I do to kind of help my posture especially as your front kind of gets more heavy. This is true also afterwards uh, when you're carrying the baby, but I squeeze my shoulder blades behind. So you see, if, you, if I took off my shirt, you'd see that my shoulder blades are moving behind, not necessarily moving up at all, they're just moving straight back. Once that's done, we want to loosen up the neck. I hold a lot of my tension in the neck, so just gonna go to both sides around two seconds each side really feel that stretch I usually do this for quite a long time and during it I like to center myself so my husband always makes fun of me because the breathing that I did during this time so I'm simply going in when I go up and out coming down. You can also do that side to side. And uh, now uh, when I'm nursing, I actually do this head exercise because as you're carrying the baby, your neck gets all tense and everything. Um, I actually got uh, monthly massages, sometimes twice or three times a month during pregnancy, which I felt really helped me stay calm. And um, this lady was specific in uh, prenatal massages. So even when it was the week before my due date, she even um, did certain massages to help get me going. So once you do the neck, uh, the last thing is if you're really tight up there, uh, you can turn your head, look slightly down, Put just a slight pressure with your hand pushing down and then push your head, like using your head, up against that hand and pull this hand down. Gives you a nice stretch right here. Same here. Okay, so now we've done the upper body portion. Uh, we're gonna go to the middle of the body. So uh, for this one here, what I like to do is hip movements, and I swear by these. This really got me through, I feel like, at the pushing phase, trying to open up your hips, so going full wide circles. And uh, the other thing I like about this is that you can really feel it kind of inside your leg, and I can even do some lunges here in between those circles. When I was at work, I had a, a uh, yoga ball, but um, sometimes when I went to the bathroom, I just make it a point to just breathe and do a few hip circles uh, at the sink in the bathroom. Uh, it's just so that it's not weird. It's just like a single use bathroom. So it's not like anyone saw me doing this. <laughs> 
So once you do a few hip circles, this is usually where I like to do squats. Now they say doing squats is one of the best exercises you can do pregnant because it helps you open up your hips and prepare those muscles you need to push out the baby. So um, I like to use my dresser. Um, I thought it'd be fitting to do this in the nursery. My dresser is a bit higher, uh, but you can also use a bed or um, even just standing up against the wall using the wall for balance. But go down and you can hold it for a few seconds and then up. It may take you a while to really develop proper form, like your knee not passing your toes. Um, I also like to squeeze my butt when I get up to the top um, to really tone those glutes. And then sometimes when I was pregnant, I just kind of stayed down here. In fact, I don't know if you guys can see me down here, <laughs> uh, but I am in a um, yoga position where it's like a frog position, I think. I can't remember what it's called. Pigeon, something like that, where my legs are up and my arms are pushing up against my uh, inner thighs. So um, doing that, kind of really separating them. Sometimes I was too tired to do uh, 10 squats, which is all that I really could manage at night, um, especially as you get a lot bigger. Then I would just kind of go down and stay in that position for just a few seconds and come back up. Okay, so after squats, um, sometimes I feel like I wasn't loose enough yet. I might do a few more of these hip circles. And then I would go to my lower legs. So for these, I want to do hips first. So I'm going to open up my legs and do a few of these and then do the opposite direction. And then we're going to turn around. And do this side. And remember, make a conscious effort to breathe deep throughout all these exercises. It's really hard doing that and talking at the same time. <laughs> uh, that masseuse I was talking about, the demi-prenatal, um, I went to her when I first started trying to get pregnant. And she told me that when I was on the table, she couldn't tell if I was breathing or not. And that if I am pregnant or going to get pregnant, I need to consciously breathe because, you know, you're breathing for the baby too, getting the oxygen. Um, not like the baby breathes oxygen, but it helps everything flow. So right now I'm just kind of twisting my leg to loosen up my knees. Um, some people have a lot of knee pain when they're pregnant, so that's a good one. Uh, also, last one is the ankle. Now sometimes, uh, to have a little bit more fun at night or whenever I did this exercise, um, I would do some ballet moves. Um, like I said, I can't tell if you guys see my feet or not. I forgot to check that. But uh, if you're familiar with ballet moves, just staying in first, um, going to uh, front toe tip to the front side, back to first, and then back. And sometimes I would even do the movements with my hand, just for some fun uh, coordination. I'll do it this way too, so you guys can see. So up, my toe is point forward, and then back to first, and then side, back to first, and then back, so my toe is pointing back, and back to first. And I would do that several times going um, and then once I feel like my feet had a good uh, stretch, which is really important to me because I have a, a early onset of restless leg syndrome, so I put on lavender sometimes, but when I was pregnant I couldn't. So um, instead, as much as I could, I took magnesium supplements and had to stop uh, when I got closer because that could uh, affect labor because it interacts with your muscles. So having um, good stretching on the feet and the ankles is really, really important. So next thing that I encountered when I was pregnant is uh, when I was about eight months pregnant, I started to get uh, these shooting pains down my hips. I'm like, oh, contractions. No, 
I called the doctor and they're like, yeah, it sounds like sciatica. Now what that is, is when a nerve in your back is being pinched, well specifically the sciatica nerve, which runs all the way from the middle of the back down to your feet, um, is being pinched by a slip disc or a bulging disc in your spine. Um, and a lot of people think, oh, that means I need to strengthen my back or stretch my back. And while it's great to really connect your core, um, at the same time, uh, what actually you need is to stretch these back muscles. So I went to my bed, I'm just going to use this chair here, and I would lean forward like this. And uh, I dig in my heel into the bed or chair um, so that I can really feel it right here. Make sure you don't lock that other knee. So really stretching that muscle. I also like to do lunges to really feel it in my calves. And then you can lean forward to feel that stretch a little bit higher. Do that on both sides. Okay, so now I'm gonna look to see if you guys can see on the bottom here. Okay, so I'm gonna back the camera up a little bit because we're gonna do some floor work. There we go. Sorry for the jolts, but hashtag this is real. Um, Okay, so now uh, the other thing I like to do when pregnant is cat cow, if you're familiar with that from yoga. So um, just evenly space your hands and your knees uh, coming from your shoulders and your hip. And I'm going to start with my butt muscles, or my butt bones, I guess. And I'm just going to slightly bend them forward. And the last thing that comes down is my head. And then once again, starting from my butt, going up into... Uh, cow, I think this is. This is cat. But one reason that I really like this, it kind of stretched the stomach area a little bit. Now, um, keep in mind that you don't want to overexert yourself, especially pregnant. Uh, only do it to what feels good to you. And uh, for legal reasons, I'm not a medical professional. You should always consult your doctor before doing any of these exercises. Glad we got that out of the way. Okay. And then also I'd like to slightly bend my head looking down to my bottom and my hip goes the same way, almost like looking me in the face. And I'm doing it the other way. And then, um, usually I stop there. Sometimes I like to sit um, and kind of stretch the inside of my muscles like this and I usually uh, say a prayer or turn on um, a hypnobirthing uh, soundtrack and just really focus and be in the moment and uh, put my hands on my belly and just uh, savor and almost thought communicate to your baby uh, just how thankful you are for him or her and if you're uh, religious saying that prayer uh, for your birth, for this child, uh, I feel like that really helps prepare you mentally for things. Uh, so stretching this area here is really important. Now one exercise that I wish I did, and I'm going to share this with you guys, uh, was actually the, um, I think it's called baby pose in or happy baby, it's called happy baby in yoga. So it's where you lay on your back. And now anytime I go on the back, um, from years of Pilates training, I always tilt my pelvis in, my back being completely flat, adjusting my shoulders so that my back has a nice flatness to it. And then closing the rib cage so it tightens this core portion, really important. This is also a great position to do your Kegel exercises which Kegel exercises can help with bladder control post-pregnancy. A lot of people have trouble with that. I actually have zero bladder control issues so far, so I think I'm safe. <laughs> um, and I really think it's because my Kegel is so strong. So Kegel it basically feels like you're holding your pee. So in order to experience this, go to the toilet, go pee, and stop yourself from peeing midstream that is the muscle you are working out. So right now I am keggling. Um, it's just going, holding it and releasing, holding it and releasing. 
Um, I usually like to do a few hip tilts. So now I have this space in between my back. This is like the natural alignment that you would typically have standing up. And I'm just gonna go in. I like to breathe really loud. Another thing I picked up from years of Pilates and I feel like it's very cathartic. Um, so in this position, once you're back, you're gonna put your feet up. You're gonna grab the insides of your feet. You're gonna lift your head. In, in yoga, you can kind of twist. Now be really careful about this, not to overextend yourself when pregnant. But um, in pushing stage, I was planning on squatting. So I did a good amount of squats during pregnancy. Probably not nearly as enough. Um, and I did squat for probably about 30 minutes of pushing. Um, and then I was like, how long is this going to take? <laughs> uh, and my pushing ended up being two hours. So uh, the other moves that I did was um, I put the bed up and I laid over the bed um, and kind of like pushed out this way. Um, and that wasn't really pushing as much as I wanted. I don't know if you guys could see that, but it was like draped over the bed like this. Um, and I, it just, I couldn't really get a good amount of power to push. So, uh, my midwife said, Hey, if you want this out faster, you should do purple pushing, which I was breathing down my baby, which is a hypnobirthing technique. So I'm like, okay, let's just try it. So, um, what they had me do was we were laying on my back, um, and not preferable because I wanted my hips to open. However, they kind of did because I had my husband, who's my birth partner, and one of the nurses on this side, they're holding my foot and my leg. And then I took my legs and they wanted me to pull up like this, which doesn't that remind you of this? Which I feel like this would actually have been easier to keep my legs open because they wanted me to pull it open here, which is just an awkward position. I should have done it like this because it's easier to push out with my elbows. I had more strength that way. So next time I'm pregnant and delivering, this is how I'm going to do it. <laughs> so that's why this exercise is probably going to be a good one for you to try if you plan on doing a natural uh, vaginal birth. So um, do that one for a little bit. Uh, a lot of these exercises you can kind of mix and match as you go. Um, so feel free to uh, do that as you want. Um, and also, uh, as you approach labor, there's a whole bunch of different ones that you can do to kind of help you uh, kickstart labor. Uh, and you, you can find those online. This one's just for like every day of your pregnancy and post-pregnancy uh, for loosening up those muscles and having um, just a easier pregnancy. I feel like it really helped me uh, throughout pregnancy just to... Uh, have a healthier body. Now this does not substitute working out in general. Um, most of the time during my pregnancy, I think pre-seven months, um, I walked at least 30 minutes a day, either my dog or down my river with a friend or walk away at pounds when it got colder, uh, which is an inside walking, walking video you could do. Uh, it got a lot harder on eight and nine months, so try to find ways to move about. Uh, without overextending yourself. Uh, the When I passed my due date, I actually walked three hours a day every single day afterwards. Um, I would get up really early <laughs> and like walk up and down the stairs because walking really helps induce labor. So walk, 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 as uh, the lady who does walk away the pounds would say. Thank you so much for joining this video. I'm Alicia from DIYHomeHealth.com. Uh, check out the site for more videos, and I definitely be posting more stuff specifically for natural mamas like you. Thanks.